<laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the Power Panel. Um, we're so happy to be doing this uh, this year, and I am so happy to have four incredible Power Panelists, and um, most of them I've known for a long time in this industry. I'm going to start off with the, the charming woman right here on my left. Her name is Diane Benson. Her career in trade show marketing began uh, around 20 years ago, right, as a healthcare exhibitor. But during this career, she's worked both as an exhibitor and a supplier to the industry. She has achieved her certified trade show marketing, marketer certification, CTSM, and her gold upgrade in uh, 2007. She's currently manager of conventions for the medical diagnostics division of GE Healthcare. Diane oversees more than 45 trade shows and several corporate meetings and events each year. Welcome, Diane. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hi. <laughs> on, her, on her left is, uh, is a guy from Southern California. Uh, he's uh, Jim Birch. I must say, his picture is up. No, it isn't up there. Anyway, he's communications <laughs> director of Toshiba America Medical Systems. Jim's responsibilities include exhibits and events, collateral, advertising, and new media. Jim's got a wide range of experience from theater and performing arts to exhibits and advertising to making Conestoga wagons for the bicentennial, right? Okay. Jim lives in Southern California, as I do. He spends Thanksgiving every year here in the lovely city of Chicago, at least he has for the last 20 years, setting up his exhibit for the annual RSNA meeting. However, he prefers the weather here in the summer. Uh, we're both uh, members of the Magic Castle, in case any of you have ever been there and know what that is. Please welcome Jim. Nice to be here. Thank you. And on his left is, a, is an old dear friend of mine. We go back to TSEA activities in the, anyway, <laughs> go back a long time ago on the West Coast, uh, Francesca Lendrum. She's Director of Marketing Services at a company called Navtech which is a unit of Nokia. So you've heard of, I'm sure, both Navtech or those little navigation systems um, in your car. For the past 10 years, she's been responsible for over annually 200 trade shows and event marketing programs at Navtech. Previously, she's had experience as a supplier and a client. She's been on both sides of the industry, like Diane. She's a former TSEA chapter leader. She's still involved in SEMA, which is the Corporate Event Marketing Association. Please welcome Francesca. Okay. <clears throat> and last but not least, my friend from aerospace, Mike Olson has been also involved in the exhibit industry for over 20 years. He's senior manager of business development at Raytheon Company, responsible for almost 100 domestic and international exhibitions and events. In fact, he returned just a few weeks ago from the Paris Air Show. Uh, he's heavily involved with TSEA, very proud, currently serving his second term on TSEA's board of directors. Mike, welcome. Now, we have a microphone in the middle between the, the two sections here, so if you have some burning comments or some questions that you would like to ask to further amplify what I'm going to ask the folks, please step up to the mic and we'll add you into the program. Um, one other thing, just to be quite candid, I sent all of the questions to our panelists in advance so they would have an idea of how, how crazy I was going to be, okay? I'm not really being crazy, but they're just, I want them to know what to expect. My first question, we have six, six and a half million people out of work, thousands of companies have closed down, so quite honestly there is a much smaller universe of buyers and sellers on the trade show floor today. The good news is it appears that exhibitions are now drawing attendees with massive buying power. And we'll toss this up for anyone who wants to go first. Has this been your experience about finding attendees with massive buying power at exhibitions so far this year? And secondly, have you had to do any special adjustments to the new reality? Who wants to go first? I mean, this is spontaneous. We didn't well, play it. I'll give you a, just a okay, first Mike. take. I mean, from the defense and aerospace, there's not a lot of sales on the show floor. So I think this is going to, uh, I'll defer to the three on my right here, but when you look at that, the, the main thing though is really, uh, I think this year with our metrics and focus on the metrics, we're really focusing on our customers 
uh, not so much the sales, but taking care of the customer's needs and wants. Okay, fine. Francesca? Um, we're seeing, excuse me, <clears throat> we're seeing actually uh, the quality of attendance has is, is remained the same. The buying power, I wouldn't say that it's doubled so much or, or gotten so much uh, consolidation, but the, uh, the authoritarian people are at the shows. They're at so the show. even though you might ha have lost some attendance at some of these shows, the right people are coming. So right. that's to, to us that we, what we, we have found. Right. Yeah, and in my experience, the uh, larger shows that we've attended since the crash uh, had a good quality of, of suppliers who came, of, of uh, buyers who came. But what we notice is that the larger shows also have lost attendance more than the smaller meetings that we've attended. Okay, that's so the smaller meetings are, are being more well attended than the larger ones. You're probably getting rid of those people who are just looky loose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Same thing. Now, we've had a similar experience where if the attendance is down, the quality of the target audience is high, higher percentage of our target audience. Mm -hmm. There's fewer tire cook kickers and the quality of the leads is actually improving. Yeah. So. Well, that's, that's been the feedback that, that I have gotten and most show organizers that I've talked to felt, again, very proud that they were, they were getting a much higher quality buyer on the show floor, but, and that's but why... But I would I, also like to say I'm not sure that they really have money in their pocket to buy. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, the massive purchasing power, we're, we're not certain yeah. about yeah. that part <laughs> of it. <laughs> Perhaps, but but we're, I think we're all investing on the opportunity when they do have the cash to right. buy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just a question to you, Mike. Uh, what is the aerospace feel? I mean, because we all know how it shrunk. Are you, are you still feeling good about the next couple of years? Well, we, you mentioned earlier about the Paris Air Show. We just got back, finished up in mid-June. Um, there was a lot of rumors, and I'm sure the show management will spin this to say that it was increased uh, attendance, increased sales, everything else. But bottom line, there was a lot of discussion. We have a large area on the chalet row, and the discussion on the street was really that there was about 25 to 30 percent less visitors. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you that the attitude that Raytheon had coming in, and we did very well. We did right. a good job with a lot of, and I, I, I give the credit primarily, you know, I'd love to take the credit with show management, but it's not only show <laughs> management, but uh, I'll, I'll tell you that our, our business development team, our sales team from a, a, with the aerospace really did a good job on setting up the meetings ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So right. we met our objectives. Thank you, okay. So. Next question, we'll move on. Um, some trade shows are uh, like the Plastic Show, the Clean Show, and Graph Expo are subsidizing drayage costs for exhibitors to incentivize them to continue displaying heavy equipment. The cost, this costs about three to four million for each show. Now, undoubtedly, this is good for exhibitors. Now, your thoughts, will this pressure other shows to follow suit? And would you choose one show over another if drayage were included? <laughs> well, I haven't had this experience in the healthcare industry yet. Um, we'd love to see it, but I think uh, someone's going to be paying the bill somewhere. And if, it's, if it ends up being absorbed into floor space costs, I think the smaller exhibitors are going to be subsidizing the larger exhibitors. And I don't see that as fair to the smaller exhibitors or the exhibitors who don't have large pieces of equipment. Um, I, I just. Well ha said. Right. Yeah, haven't had that experience yet. Okay. Anyone else want to? No. No. I haven't seen it yet, but I, I've heard of the concept. And uh, in some places, like you mentioned, some of the heavy equipment, you know, those drainage costs have to be outrageous. And so I, com I completely understand finding a way to discount them or keep them at a different level. I have to say, though, um, I agree that I'd have to see how the services fall out or how the. Uh, um, how it's prorated in order to see, is it fair to all levels of exhibiting? Is it, uh, is it something that's going to change costs in a different area? Is also, we have to think industry-wide, is it going to hurt the general contractor? And then they're going to have an issue with the show. So there's, there's a lot of things to take into consideration. I'd have to hear more. Well, obviously, this, this impacts the profit model for the general service contractors. Right. And that impacts labor and that impacts exactly. uh, yeah. you know, equipment. And so it impa you know, with the show going slower, will it be different? You know, there's a lot of things to think about. OK, so this is not an overwhelming endorsement of the concept. Well, now, I've got another one for you to, okay. to chew on just for a second. 